Hello everyone. Hi. Welcome in. Um, today we're doing more on the Deathwing the Scarred, Kazari the Scarred Deathwing paint over. We have some surprisingly loud <laughs> background music from World of Warcraft. Keep us company. Um, for those watching on YouTube, I'm also currently raising money for the uh, the WWF, World Wildlife Foundation, to help protect and safeguard tigers. Um, if you've seen me on Twitch at all, uh, you'll know I work with them very regularly. Um, if you're just joining me via YouTube, you might not know it, but I'm going to be raising money for the next couple of weeks, so you'll hear me mention it a few times over the next few videos. I hope that's okay with you. But housekeeping out the way. Today we're going to be working on the base. My idea for this base is to kind of keep it very lava themed, very um, Deathwing, you know, um, Deathwing's lair, very dark black molten rock and red lava, red orange yellow lava bubbling in between the cracks. So that's the plan. Um, Firstly, I've got to get started on some fiery undercolors. That's where I'm going to start first. Um, I don't have a specific guide or plan for this. So uh, I'm going to kind of... No pun intended, I'm going to be kind of winging it. And hoping for the best. So I'm going to start off first. I'm just going to mark out some rough areas and then kind of go back in there with some some other colours to kind of build up the whole look of it. So just using kind of an oil brush, um, a mixture of reds and oranges and yellows. There's going to be a bit of like, not blending, but it's, it's going to be kind of fuzzy and not clearly defined sections just because obviously Lava itself isn't exactly an exact science. Or magma, if you prefer. So I want to keep it kind of easy, loose, and gentle to start off with. So I'm going to start with the darker colours first and work my way up to the brighter ones. What I also want to do is avoid too much confusion with any of the colours that are actually going to be on the model. I want it to kind of be more of an echo than a direct copy. So, starting off and just kind of sketched out a rough shape. Uh, bearing in mind, there's also going to be scenery pieces like this coming up on top. Uh, if I've got time tonight, I'll paint those as well. But uh, we'll see how it goes. So it's uh, going to be on the... going to be keeping to roughly a two hour kind of situation tonight. Again, I'm not going to worry too much about it being even. Just... That we've got some good it is about sort of creating that impression of scalding hot molten rock is what i want to do uh if you want to replicate this at home uh my recommendation is pick a brush you don't like very much it is very very rough on any brushes that you do use it with so obviously it forces the paint quite deep into the bristles. Um, so uh, don't use your favourite brush for this one. So it will shorten the lifespan of any brush you use for it. I'm using quite an old brush. So I'm not too fussed about what happens to it. Okay, so I'm in quite a, a wide area. So 
Especially when you're working with red, you kind of got to be a bit careful on uh, how those pan out. Because they can stain quite, quite dramatically. <laughs> It started off with actually quite a uh, bright red. Um, started off with Well Stacker. Now moving to an even brighter red, Evil Sun Scarlet. So again, try and pick a brush that you're not too fond of for this. And don't follow set patterns. You want it to look organic. So I'm not worrying too much about these blending together either. Like I said, I'm going for an organic look. Um, just kind of trying to keep to this sort of dotting. Because it, it kind of removes half e harsh edges to any of your colours. Um, it sort of also pre-blends it a little bit for you, so... So it makes it a little bit easier later on down the line. I'm also going to go here and do some brighter bits here as well. Again, with this, you don't need to worry about cleaning your brush in between as much, only in so much as you don't want to transfer paints in between parts. But having a little bit of colour left over on your brush is not going to ruin the next layer. If anything, it just means better blending, right? Hey, Dachi, welcome in. I hope you're having a good day. the oranges a bit now. Okay, glad to hear it, Dashi. Glad to hear it. I'm doing all right. I'm having some fun with some fiery colors today. So this is kind of the base layer for. Um, a lava base that I'm working on. So we want some oranges, we want some reds, I'm gonna put some yellows on in a minute. We like fiery colors, yeah. So this this is all going to be um, at the base of our big dragon that we've been working on. 
So we're going to have all these fiery colours and then we're going to have, you know, the black rock crackling over the top of it. This one's still on. There we go. And you should start to see see what I mean about the fiery colours coming through a bit more now. a lot of paint on this brush. Hey, Han, welcome in. How are you doing, lovely? How has your day been? So I'm just using the side of my brush just to kind of get some of the the paint off that's kind of worked its way up there. Um, and then going over it to get get rid of the, the harsh edges. I'm kind of working it into the rest of what we've got here. Okay. I'm trying to avoid sort of taking paint away where I need to be adding it. Bad magic just resubscribed for 26 months. What's this? 26 months with magic. this awesome, talented, wonderful, caring panda less than three. Magic, thank you so much for the resub. 26 months. That is a long time. Thank you so much. You're too kind. Welcome in. I hope you're having a good day. Or a good evening, I believe. Will be for you? I'm actually going to go in and put a little bit of extra red in there because I think I'm missing some. I think it's going a little bit too orange. Which, you know, I like orange, but lava isn't all one colour. This is a bit of a stronger red, it should hopefully not get overwhelmed or be too overwhelming. But yeah, uh, for those who are wondering, uh, it is also that time of year again I'm raising money for the WWF again um, I'm not gonna be pushing it super hard this week and next week I'm gonna be doing some more more charity focused stuff um, but it's for the show your stripes campaign which is all about protecting tigers and their habitats so uh, please only give if you can please don't feel obliged to give um, and then, you know, there's, there's the usual giveaways and things like that if we hit certain landmarks. Are the Lich King, how are we forward? Yes, that's right. That's right. Good ear, Dad. I am playing music from Wrath of the Lich King today. Uh, Good morning, you're two hours ahead of me, Magic. 
Are you really having a break? That sounds good. It's good to have a break. Magic, but I hope uh, I hope you're having fun. That's the important thing. And I am doing well, thank you. I'm uh, enjoying having fun with uh, with dabbing bright colours. <laughs> I don't often work with really, really super bright colours like this, so it's, it's always fun to step out in something new. And yeah, it might be a bit messy, but it's cool. It's fun. You know what I haven't done for the charity stuff? I haven't set up the donate link in Lightbot. That would probably be helpful, wouldn't it? Two moments, folks. I, I literally just remembered. <laughs> okay, um, just bear with me a moment while I do that. I will, I'll still be here and talking. Um, but I, I'll be pausing the painting for just two moments while I work. Oh, you like the assassin, Dashi? Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was for my partner. Um, it's actually my partner's model, um, but I, I painted it. Uh, obviously. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I've been, um, been doing some stuff like that recently. There we go. And then over to here. But thank you very much. It's uh, the actual um, model itself is an exclusive for uh, Warhammer Plus. So. It's uh, not a model commonly available. That's why you painted gods? Oh, thank you, Dashi. I, I am putting all painting gods on YouTube now. Um, I will eventually start putting Twitch gaming gods on there too. Um, and obviously I've just started streaming over there. So, yeah. <laughs> Basically, uh, I'm doing more over on YouTube because it's probably the easiest way for me to actually you know, start growing things, but um, without adding too much to my workload and they can be assisted. You got to tell on the second screen. Oh, I love that. Thank you, Dutch. That actually means so much to me. Um, I, I love the, I love hearing that folks are kind of enjoying watching my stuff when I'm not live. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, you can get paranoid. It's Wretched Kingdom's Awake Beneath My Rage. Where's that quote from, Magic? It sounds familiar. I feel like I should know it. Okay. Back to the good stuff. <laughs> Back to the painting. 
So, yes. Promise, last time I mentioned it, but we're raising money for the WWF Show Your Stripes campaign. It's to protect and safeguard tigers in the wild and um, in conservation zones. Um, please only give what you can. If you can't give, that's absolutely fine. Um, but I'll be doing this until the 27th of October. So, if you want to find out more, uh, you can check out uh, the the details via the link at exclamation mark charity, uh, or contact the WWF live streamers team. Uh, they're they're on Twitter and Discord and all the usual social places. Uh, they're a really really lovely bunch as well. I'm super dedicated. I'm always happy to stream for them. I could make my living just streaming for them, I would. Because they're an absolute delight. Okay, the last little bit. Over here. So I basically just want to make sure that there's a little bit, like there's no black showing on this layer is the main thing but also that there's no areas that are kind of like looking a bit monotone because you think about lava you think of it sort of boiling and you know kind of angry looking and strong you, you don't want kind of weedy weak colors But I think, I think that's us sorted on the colour side. I don't see anywhere where I can kind of add extra colours. Cool. Awesome. And that's the whole vessel. Oh, that's deafening. I know that second quote. <laughs> I forgot that my my deafening knowledge is a little rusty, <laughs> admittedly, because uh, it it's been a little while since. Uh, since Cataclysm came out. So that's why I won't remember it straight away. Alright, so gorgeous fiery colours to one side for a minute. We're just working on these bits. Oh both are from Deathwing. That makes a lot of sense. All of us, or I shall break and shall burn beneath the shadow of my wings. I remember hearing that for the first time and just getting literal chills down my spine. When you see Deathwing swooping over and just the trail of fire in his wake with his just deep bass voice saying that line, just <laughs> it's terrifying. And awesome at the same time. That brings your favorite dragon. I did not know that magic. Honestly, um, the idea for this came about when I first saw this model of doing a sort of painting makeover the this this uh, model which is uh, the the base model is Kazurai the Scarred from Age of Sigma and it's such a perfect like ancient Deathwing look you know he's been a bit worn and battered from his battles with 
Yeah. Anixia, Alexstrasza, the whole of Azeroth. He's got the scars, he's got the... a bit of a withered look to him. But still strong, still powerful, still with that square jaw. Those iron plates barely holding him together. I don't know. I, I got the idea and I, I couldn't get it out of my head. Too many times. And don't get his weapon. Mm. I never got his weapon. No, if we're talking about the uh, the dragon flights, I I'm a Yesara girl. <laughs> you know, I loved Yesara. The Emerald Dream, just everything about it. Green dragon flight, all the way. But I can see why uh, why folks like Deathling. He's got a very uh, Mad Titan feel to him. Also, kind of fond of Chromie, which is a little bit annoying, but... Chromie's cool as well. Sarah's beauty, yeah. Um, I will say there is a moment in Legion relating to Sarah that broke my heart. If you haven't played all the way through Legion, I'm not going to mention it directly. But if you've played it, you know which one I mean. It broke my heart. It is the main reason I didn't keep playing Legion through as many times as I intended to. It's a bit relating to Elune's tear if you're not aware of it. Or if you can't quite remember which bit I mean. Okay. That was a bit sad. Yeah, I cry, I cried as well. <laughs> Magic. Although, again, she still looked beautiful. She, she looked so beautiful, but at the same time, it was so heartbreaking. But yeah. <laughs> Again, one of the many reasons I love WoW. Even after all this time, some of these moments will stick with you forever. I feel like Wrath of the Lich King has some of the most memorable music. Which is why I put it on today. Because, you know, it's... It's amazing. And it's, it's very soothing and bittersweet in a way.
Okay. Beth is a good one. Yeah, Legion was my will always be my favorite. But I did enjoy Wrath. Just had to block some excess water from that area. If you're wondering why that disappeared for a moment. always love the universe of WoW and the stories. It's just, just a shame about the state of the game itself these days. There's my darling raid. <laughs> Alex Strauss and my darling. <laughs> oh my goodness. Folks really do love Alex Strauser. He's a, she's a popular one. So folks, bear with me a second. I'm missing a color that I needed. I can't remember where I put it. always remember from um, early well is uh, the spine of Deathwing because that just ruined my group time and time again I always remember it as one of the most brutal raids I ever had to do. But again, it was also sort of the, the the height of my guild that I was in back then. That was when we were doing the most in terms of raiding and sort of working together. So it was it was both good and bad for that. hunter a bit yes uh, i was i was the hunter <laughs> i i played hunter exclusively back then i didn't really play any other class it was hard work <laughs> did manage to do it um but whoo <laughs> it was tough then again fun and I kind of, like, I miss those days where I had no other sort of real responsibilities. And I, I wish I could have some of that time back, but with the people I currently know. 
because I feel like it would have been so much better with them. <laughs> But uh, sadly, the game isn't what it used to be. I don't know. Memories of gaming with friends are some of the best I've got. <laughs> and I don't care if that sounds kind of sad, but... You don't realise how special those kinds of memories are at the time. different part you want. Oh, I'm sorry your brother couldn't print it, but I'm glad you have the, the plastic sheets. Are you happy with how it turned out when you cut it out? I'm gonna worry about this big piece first, and then I'll, I'll come back and do the the other section. I mean, as long as you're happy with it, that's the important thing. It doesn't need to be perfect. As long as it's good enough for you, that's alright. I'm glad it worked out. I'm glad you were able to finish the model. That's that's the good thing. Unfortunately, it's going to be a lot of greys and blacks from here on in. <laughs> we started off with a really bright pop of colour, but it's going to be a lot of, a lot of monochrome. So we're trying to do, uh, you know, black and blasted ruins. Left behind from a, what looks like a lava hit. Not done with the model. Oh, it's eighty percent done. Nice. I understand what you mean now. Hey, that's so good. It's closer than I am to being done with this Deathwing. <laughs> I feel like I've barely started this. But it's so I, I love doing this sort of thing. It's giving it a new and completely 
um, different look to models to the one that they're portrayed with. Because I mean, on the um, on the box art, this particular model is uh, cream and red dragon on a sandy, grassy base with white marble and um you know white marble and gold so it's it i'm really keen to see how this turns out with such a drastically different color scheme magic book oh thank you magic i really appreciate that I, I feel like, um, I don't know, I feel like a veteran novice, in a way, <laughs> when it comes to painting. Like, I, I know I'm I'm not a complete newbie, uh, but I, I don't feel like an expert or anything. I know I've been doing it a long time, but I still feel like I've barely started to get to grips with you know, the the skill of painting minis. You know, you're extremely talented yourself, Magic. You're a very, very talented painter. I'm very lucky to be surrounded by a lot of talented artists in general. going going through this <laughs> slowly but surely we're getting there <laughs> oh, anytime magic and I believe you are In terms of model painting, uh, it will probably just be this, this week. Um, I, I doubt I'm going to finish this in two sessions, just because of the sheer size of the model and how much I've got to do still. Um, this is going to be at least another session, if not two more sessions. And then uh, I've got a model that I've been looking forward to doing for a while, especially for spooky season. Uh, and then we'll see where we're at. We'll see where we're at in terms of models. I've got a few projects that I can pick from. Uh, I'm, I'm going to pick the one that appeals to me the most. But then we're looking into November and December time. <laughs> So that's quite a ways away for me to decide. Because incredibly, there's only two weeks left of October already. I don't know where all the time has gone.
So we're already pretty much halfway through the October. Which is nuts. <laughs> oh, you're too kind, Magic. You are too kind to me and too sweet. So yeah, this week is going to be kind of more of a chill pace, I think. I think I was a little bit ambitious last week with how many streams I had planned uh, and how much I had to do outside of streaming. Uh, so I dialed it back a little bit to kind of get myself... Uh, get, give myself a bit of a better idea of what I can and can't do. And then... Um, for the last two weeks of October, I'm going to be off of my day job. It's my my holiday. <laughs> um, so next week will be lots of streaming, lots of hopefully being around other people's streams, which I have missed a lot. Um, and then the last week of October will be my, my proper holiday, uh, where I will be, as usual, doing only, only a couple of streams uh, just to give myself a chance to recharge and to prevent burnout because that's the thing that's important to keep an eye on. Hey Mango, welcome in. Thank you so much for the like, I appreciate it. Hope you enjoy your uh, your shenanigan flirting, or just general life excellence, whatever it is you are doing. And I hope you're doing well and having a wonderful, wonderful time. Okie dokie. You know what? So hopefully it's it's showing up. It's still kind of low contrast, but I'm picking out all of the rubble, all of the building pieces are being picked out in a kind of a darker grey. Okay, it's almost bluish grey actually. Um, I'm gonna try and keep the the lava rock very dark, very um, burned looking for want of a better description. Uh, so this is going to be kind of a lighter, but still, I kind of want it looking faintly scorched, but it's going to be lighter and there's going to be a little bit of decoration on there to kind of make it look a bit more interesting. Enjoy your vacation? Thank you, Magic. I usually take some time off in October, in general. Um. Christmas is a very busy time in my day job, so I don't really get to take a break around that time. It's kind of the last point in the year where I can really have a pause. Uh, which kind of works out, you know? With me hopefully going to PAX more in the future. Uh, sometimes I'll be in the U UK for that, hopefully. More, more often in the future. I'll be in Australia for it as well. <clears throat> but no, this year it is just going to be a, a big old uh, kind of garage sale almost in uh, in my household. We we are selling our junk, and I mean that in the literal sense of we have too much junk in this house, and it is going basically all on eBay and just getting rid of it, getting it out of our house and into someone else's home. So that it is not our problem anymore. And I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> I'm looking forward to having more space for activities. <laughs> and you know, maybe a little bit of money in the bank account, but that's that's kind of the secondary thing 
in this scenario. The main goal is get rubbish out the house that I don't need or want or use anymore. Which I think I've talked about a fair bit. Yeah, one person is drunk is someone else's treasure. Um, I've got a lot of things like old models, um, old hobby supplies that I don't that are either still in their box and just completely unused, or have been kind of looked at and put to one side and forgotten about. And, you know, I've also got loads of old clothing that's just, it's perfect, it's basically brand new, but I bought it for an occasion, you know, like a job interview or, you know, one, e one night out, a special night out, and then never wore it again. And instead of having it sat in my cupboard, it could be someone's new favourite thing. So, yeah, that's kind of where my perspective is. I'd much rather have 10 items of clothing that I really love than, you know, 20 items of clothing and just being kind of eh about most of them. So, that's where I'm at with that. <laughs> The very long and rambly way of going about it, but I've basically been combing through and getting rid of all the actual rubbish over the past couple of months, and now it's come to the time of the stuff that is still good, just not good for me anymore. Uh, it's now come to that time of finding that stuff in your home. Okay. There you go. Oh, are you ordering the, uh, the Kaifas K novel, Dachi? I really hope you enjoy it. You magic, you're being too kind. You gotta make me cry. <laughs> Honestly, this I, I know some people talk about giving your things away being a warning sign. For me, it's a sign that I'm finally in a good place mentally. Because I find it hard to let go of things when my mental health is not doing so good. So I'm really genuinely happy about this and excited. Okay. Is that the one I needed? Yes, it is. One thing I'm going to do is sort through all of my paintbrushes. <laughs> That's one thing I'm going to do when I'm off. Oh, you have to let me know what you think, Dutch. I hope you enjoy it. I really do. For me, it was th that series is what got me convinced to try Warhammer. Because I, I was so curious about all of the about the universe after reading those books and just, you know, everything that went on. And then my partner turns around to me and goes, you know, they make models as those, right? And I was sold. I was like, yes, I'm in. Okay, fine. <laughs> Sign me up. Where do I start? And uh, here we are. Still going after all this time. Glad you found the first work. I am too. That's awesome to hear. They're re they're still popular books. Um, I own, I think, two copies, one on Kindle, one in paperback. 
and uh, the my username, Jinxy, actually is a reference to one of those novels. It's a reference to one of the characters in there. So, uh, yeah. Uh, those books are special to me. <laughs> Try. I'm glad to hear it, Dachi. And I'm not going to be offended if they're not for you. I, I understand. I completely understand how it might not be for everyone. not easy to do this sort of line when your brushes are dying on you. If anyone ever finds thin model painting brushes that last longer than one or two models, let me know. Cause... good grief. this bit. I'll have to paint over some of that. Right, the idea behind this is just hit a fancy palace or a house, maybe out near the Song Woods. Deathwing has summoned his powers over the earth and fire. Maybe it's a blood elf domain. No worries. No worries, Magic. Good luck. I hope the games go well. Enjoy the lurk. Oh, you're uh, you're going through some Naruto manga? That's cool, Dash. Uh, I'm honestly, for the first time in a little while, I'm not reading anything at the moment kind of between books. I've just finished one and I've not yet decided what my next one's going to be. But the one I just finished is one that I've read multiple times. Sort of a comfort book. 
ironically it's called the comfort crisis <laughs> but it's one that i read quite often um kind of a i guess a philosophical take on how uh modern life is kind of causing comfort creep that we're all a little bit too comfy with modern life and the more comfortable we are the less happy we are that kind of thing and it's just a very interesting philosophical take and it's it's a nice one to keep in mind when you're suffering a little bit too much from first world problems maybe <laughs> I find it rereading it helps me get perspective on some of my issues sometimes. Yeah, it's not a perfect fix, but it's a great one, great tool to have in in my arsenal. Is some other stuff too? Nice. Now, I've been doing a lot of reading for, for work and for uh, my diploma, so my my personal reading has kind of taken a little bit of a backseat recently. That's alright, it happens. That's what weekends and holidays are for, right? Catching up on the to be read file. Jeez. Okay. I think that is enough in terms of the guilt and the gold. to get books and not read them. It happens. I, I've kind of given myself a rule of if I've not touched it in the past two years and it's not something like a special occasion thing and it's not a sentimental item then you know unless there's a good reason not to I'm, I'm going to start getting rid of it. So it's giving myself a lot of leeway, you know, I I don't want to sacrifice everything I own. But, you know, if it's not something I've used and not something that I'm, I'm keeping on for sentimental value, then finding another home for it seems like the best course of action to me. And I'm not saying this is something that everyone needs to do. It's just a personal rule that I've started using. Especially with the hobbies that I've got, I have a nasty tendency to get a lot of stuff. Because, <laughs> you know, painting, models and stuff, they tend to accumulate over time. You don't really realise how rapidly until you kind of take a step back and you go, Huh, <laughs> I've run out of space. Brush needs to go in the bin. Okay, hopefully you can still see what I'm working on if I paint from here. to find a system that works for you as well, Dutch. 
for me part of it is that I eventually uh, like I want to be ready to move house when the time's right um, part of it is money you know it costs a lot of money to look after a lot of stuff and I don't have a lot of money but I have a lot of stuff and um, part of it is just simply you know, growing out of a lot of it. I got a lot of stuff from even before I was in uni. So that stuff is more than 10 years old. And only some of it is sentimental. A lot of it is just stuff. Pointless stuff. So. It's silly to hold on to. See you working on tiny details? Glad to hear it. Because these are teeny tiny little skulls. Skulls and grasses. Which I think, if I remember rightly, is a book. Spells and Crosses. Or am I thinking of Noughts and Crosses? Okay, but tomorrow there'll be some, some close-up shots, some work-in-progress shots, um, where you will uh, going up on, on Instagram and Twitter and all those usual places. So if you can't quite see them, uh, the shots will be up there and they'll be part of what I upload to coffee at the end of the month as well because again I, I've, I've had to work out a schedule for coffee because I, I was getting very behind on it and struggling to kind of post every week because <laughs> sometimes there's not really a lot to post especially with these bigger projects uh, so once a month is kind of an easier way for me to do it Kind of makes it a bit Patreon-ish, but the difference being with Patreon you had to pay every month, this time you only need to pay once and it's all yours. I've done it that way instead, because I didn't feel like I was doing enough on Patreon to justify what people were paying. Okay. There we go. 
Not one of the skulls. So, can you see that coming up? There we go. Now you can see the skulls nice and clearly. They are absolutely tiny. Details like that are what make uh, painting a model like this such a challenge. Because if you miss them, and they're easy to miss, but if you miss those details, the model will never look quite right. And it will drive you crazy trying to work out where you went wrong as well. <laughs> I know this from experience. Okay, and again, painting this deep fried crispy grass has just turned into ash. So I'm just putting some highlights on it so it actually stands out a little bit. I work my way around the model. And again, small details, but just giving them that little bit extra attention. It'll make my life easier later on when I'm looking at the model at the end going, why doesn't this look right? <laughs> check this one off my mental checklist. Here I'm just just putting some detailing along the edges, some of the rough edges. A little bit of weathering, maybe, I guess you call it. Kind of pre highlight. It's not quite a highlight. The highlight comes in a little bit later on.
I guess it's shading. I'm just going in where the rock has kind of been snapped. Or sharp edges that you'd expect to see, you know, an accumulation of ash or something like that. I don't know. I find it helps to explain why that colour is going there. Sometimes it is just as simple as, you know, frogs are green. But with shades and highlights, sort of quietly asking yourself, why are you putting this colour in this place? Can sometimes really help. <clears throat> not a perfect system but it it might stop you overworking areas if you're sort of worried about that because there is such a thing as too much detail you can crowd a model and make it look confusing And I'm sort of I'm holding it against the backdrop of the the fire as well because I want to make sure that the the colours are all working together, even if a lot of the fiery colours are going to be covered. I'm still keeping it in the back of my head. I think, once I catch this a little bit here, that'll be all of it. So I'm creating a very deliberate uh, shadow, basically. I think it's probably most obvious here, if I tilt it away from the light slightly, you can see the bottom half of that being a lot darker. That's deliberate. I want that to kind of feel shaded. I'm going to do the same along here. Just taking some of this darker grey and just kind of giving, giving a bit of a shadow to it. Because Bava gives off a lot of light. So it's kind of being lit from below. And uh, I'm not going to be doing it tonight, but I might end up doing some lava glow on some of these pieces. And uh, I want to be able to at least have the shadow in place for when I do that.
Okay. Down here. Plus it just kind of looks better. It looks better with that shadow there. At least I think it does. You can tell me what you think. I almost said down in the comments, but <laughs> that's that's because I've been watching too much YouTube recently, I promise. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to move away from this piece for just a little bit. I'm going to let the colours kind of settle out a bit on that. Quick stretch. We're moving on to this one. So, I'm going to try and treat it as close to the other one as possible. plinth which should be made out of the same stone as a lot of the the archways and stuff on the bigger piece but the statue is going to be slightly different and so will the skull I feel like the skull would be actual bone. And seeing this bit on the back, this damage here, it really does feel like something Deathwing would do. Yeah. You got a really good day for this, uh, Dachi. I do love this music. I'll be honest, with all the talk about Dragonflight and stuff like that, it, it makes me miss WoW. I guess this is my way of kind of, you know, reliving a little bit of it, even if I can't play the game anymore.
Kind of looks like a, I don't know, maybe a holy statue. Maybe it's a shaman or a druid. I'm trying to think of well-known blood elves that went around barefoot. <laughs> I can't think of any off the top of my head. More of a night elf thing, isn't it? So I'm kind of trying to keep the highlights on this quite soft. I don't want thick, chunky, harsh highlights. So... I'm just kind of... I'm picking them down and then I'm just using my finger to take out the harshness of the line a bit. Just kind of smudging it. And lifting some of that paint off so it's a bit more of a gentle gentle highlight and then just like that and it's kind of hard to tell with the shine from the thing you can kind of see a little bit here. A little lag in the folds of the clerk. Oh, oh, Dash! That is such a cute emote! Oh, that's adorable. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying it. Honestly, I love these painting streams. They feel so self-indulgent. <laughs> it's just something I love doing, and um, you know, if you all let me keep doing it. Here, firstly, kind of heavy way around here. We want that bubbly black forest volcanic rock look on here, but then also at the back, going for a bit of scorching. I'm going in with a bit of a lighter coat here. Kind of scorched and blackened look to the tops where it's been broken as though it's been blasted with fire Paint some inside. 
Well, that tries. Doing the same here. Going over all these shattered tops. And this will this will dry a little light, lighter, I should say. But just where where some of it's obviously broken away. Just want to put some scotch marks in. Some evil little scorches. As opposed to happy little trees. I want it to look burned. And then just a little bit down here as well. Where it's tumbled. This is not a happy little accident here. This was Deathwing doing evil Deathwing things. I want it to look that way. It's like we went from the painting. Thank you. It's just... I, I will never... I, I mentioned this at least once a week, but I will never get over how cool it is that I get to do one of my favourite pastimes. Just, you know, painting models on stream and people will want to come and watch it's me while I do it like it it blows my mind <laughs> that that's a thing that I can do yeah and not, and not just do it but I can raise money for charity and you know stuff like that alongside it is just awesome Streaming's awesome. <laughs> I will never get used to that side of things with Twitch and streaming in general. You know, five years in and I am still amazed. All because of my wonderful community. I would not have done this for so long if it wasn't for the community. Beautiful people. So now this has dried a little bit. I'm just coming back in. I've got a skinnier brush this time. And you see these cracks? I'm just 
running that same black black templar contrast paint through those just to give them a bit more definition Thing that are really deep and I don't know what the word is. To make it look truly shattered. That's what I'm going for. You know, these cracks go right through to the foundations of, of this build. So I'm trying to just, trying to say it is one strong breeze away from smashing into a million pieces. That's what I want to give the impression of. to leave those pieces for today. I'm not sure how I'm going to add to them yet. I don't feel like they're 100% done, but I'm also not sure how to keep going with those just yet. Um, what I want to do with this base. I'm just going to put a quick edge line of black and that is more to help me with the next step once it's fully settled. Because the next step, because this is still kind of tacky. It's not wet but it's not fully dried yet either. But I want to put the framing line on at least the first layer for it, because partly because there's so much paint on the edge. But also in the next step um, comes of covering this whole thing in a thick, thick layer of uh, on earth. This will help me kind of guide that a bit. And it will mean that the, the colors on the edge won't show through as strongly. So it will, it will still have that nice framing effect that I like. So that's what I'm doing here. So a lot of this is kind of laying prep work down for future stream stuff. The thing is, I am so happy with how those fiery colours have come out. It's going to be such a shame to paint over them.
I almost don't want to. But I know it won't look right if I don't. I'm not worrying too much if it kind of, if the black kind of creeps in a little bit. Um, at this stage, partly because I can kind of thin it out a little. And partly, I, you know, it won't show so much in the final thing. This is one of those, uh, it'll look rubbish until it's finished kind of scenarios. kind of hear my finger sticking to it. There's a lot of paint on this face. So I have to Roadhog and alt twice? Oh no! I bet he was so mad, Magic. Nice work there. But yeah, um, I think I'm gonna leave that there for today. So that's what we worked on today. Move the wing out of frame for a bit. A lot of a lot of prep work for future stuff. I'm seeing him on running. Nice. Good job, Magic. That's great to hear. Um, but yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it there for tonight. Um, a little bit short still. Sadly, uh, I do have to keep an eye on time on these midweek streams. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with how it's come out so far. This is what we've got so far. <laughs> a lot of it still feels very draft work-ish. Uh, but we should see some really big progress on the dragon on Sunday, which is what I'm excited for. Lots of working on the wings on Sunday. So I'm super, super keen for that. Um, and I am going to leave it there for today. Thank you all so much for joining me. Thank you for keeping me company. And especially thank you, Magic, for the resub. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm not going to send you on a raid, but I will be live again tomorrow. Uh, on YouTube, uh, playing the rest of Wolf Among Us Chapter 1, hopefully with fewer tech issues this time. <laughs> so I hope you all can join me for that. Um, yeah, in the meantime, thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of yourselves, stay safe, and I will see you all very soon. Bye for now, folks. <laughs>